Hey guys, I look like a bloody mess, but I'm here to talk about 10 movies, 10 of them. Wow. That's it. All right, first movie here. What, what do I got written down? I literally wrote down two movies, and then I'm like, ah, you know what? I'm going to shoot it. Screw it. So, uh, 10 movies, that's it. Number one, Sex Drive. Shocked by how much this movie delivered with rapid-fire dialogue and likable, witty characters. This movie definitely won't win the PC Movie of the Year awards, but it is uncensored hilarity to the highest order. The unrated, uncensored version is utterly ridiculous and all the more hilarious for it. What was most shocking about the film was that despite the plethora of nudity throughout, it never... It, <laughs> Audrey, you distracted me with your beautiful meow here. <laughs> yeah, so uh, despite the plethora of nudity throughout, it never comes across as demeaning. Instead, it comes across as oddly innocent and free willy, free, free willying, <laughs> literally free wheeling. <laughs> the cast here is excellent all around. The standouts are Clark Duke, Seth Green, and most definitely James Marston. I give this a ten out of ten. I I love this movie, you guys. Uh, th this was the the main movie I wanted to talk about. I guess you know I I wrote down this little paragraph and I'm like yeah you know what I'm just gonna. I'm going to freewheel it myself. Uh, so so for Sex Drive, I watched the uncensored version, unrated, what have you. And by God, this this movie is so underrated, you guys. I, I don't know how it has such... So I was laughing here at the uh, IMDb, like the top rating, I guess, for this one, based off like 152 out of 181 people found this one helpful. 7 out of 10, pretty hilarious, this guy says. And yeah, yeah, it's pretty hilarious. Uh, this, I think my first time seeing it, I may have seen it on TV, like, back when it came out on VOD or whatever in 2009 or 10. But, uh, I didn't remember specific things about it. I, I remembered Superbad more, and obviously this came around the same time as Superbad, a year was, uh, passed, and then this came out. So, uh... Yeah, and I, I agree with this review down here. I mean, it's uh, 10 out of 10, of course. This one got 135 out of 189 found this helpful. And yeah, yeah, I, I'd i give this a 10 out of 10 as well. You guys, I think this movie's pretty awesome. Pretty freaking awesome, you know? And uh, I, I think the reason why I wanted to write something out like that was because, you know, I, I don't like spoiling movies. I feel like uh, you can easily spoil a movie for somebody that hasn't seen it, so... That's why I like doing these these 10 movies type thing, you know, quickly talk about them, go on to the next one. And speaking of that, number two, the last movie I wrote on here, and then we're, we're free willing it from here on. It's uh, number two, Kingpin, great comedy, Woody Harrelson, Bill Murray, and good old, good old Randy Quaid are terrific here. An oddball plot and a surprising twist near the end reveals the script is clever enough to sustain the talent involved both in front of and behind the camera. 8 out of 10 for Kingpin. I really like this movie. Uh, if I had any problems with it, I don't, I don't know. Like, it's, it's hard to pinpoint exactly, but it's, you know, it, it's not perfect, you know, and neither is Sex Drive, admittedly. I, I give that a 10 out of 10 on entertainment value. I like rating movies on entertainment value. And, uh, you know, the, the notion of revisiting them. I have a feeling if I revisited Sex Drive in the future, I'd, I'd still have a lot of fun with it just because of how ridiculous and unabashedly uh, just on PC it is, I guess. I mean, it's, it's just refreshing how, how uh, it just goes out guns blazing. And I don't know. I just loved it. And apparently my cat hates it because she's running all all over the place now. I don't blame her because it's quite hot in here already. Holy Toledo. So number three, let me move this closer, eh? Get us a bit more in intimate here. Let me write down one movie, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. So Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Robin Hood, man. Five. The odd couple. 
six. Oh, okay, so I know what I'm doing for five, but I don't know what the hell I'm doing for the last five, so we're just freewheeling it for sure then. Number three, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. I watched this last night. I hadn't seen it since I was a kid. The opening scene sort of, uh, I remember, sort of uh, traumatized me as a kid because it starts off and they're whipping people, torturing people, and it's just like it's filmed in this gross, disgusting, dirty way. And this movie has this... A uh, constant look of dirt and grime, and I I really liked it. You know, there there are points in this, like there, I really like this movie. I right off the bat, I'd give this movie like a uh, nine out of ten. Nine out of ten. The the best part about this movie is by far Alan Rickman as the sheriff of Nottingham. He is terrific here. Uh, this might be Alan Rickman's best performance in my opinion. He is just delightfully evil. And, uh, yeah, I, I don't know what else to say about this. I, I like the way they filmed the action sequences. I like the cast here. Obviously, Kevin Costner's accent isn't to be uh, admired <laughs> or, uh, or what have you. But I, I find him charming as Robin Hood. I don't know. I liked him as this character. And, uh, yeah. And Morgan Freeman's great here as well. You know, Morgan Freeman does a terrific job as well. The whole cast here, though, does brilliant stuff. And I'm getting hotter and hotter by the second, you guys. Oh, jeez, this is craziness. All right, number four, Robin Hood, Men in Tights. Gosh, what can I say about this one, eh? Oh, boy, what can I say about this one? This one was a big disappointment. I'd give 9 out of 10 to Prince of Thieves. I'd give Men in Tights like a 5 out of 10, man. This was a disappointment for me. I heard so many people praising this movie to high heavens, you know, oh, this is a great comedy, blah, blah, blah. It's not up there at all with Spaceballs, in my opinion. It's nowhere near, obviously, uh, Young Frankenstein or the producers. These are films previously directed and, I assume, written as well by Mel Brooks. Uh, Men in Tights, though, is so damn lazy and so unfunny. It, like, uh, 5 out of 10, man. It's the most mediocre movie you could imagine. Uh, Dave Chappelle's in it, but he's completely forgettable. He has next to no material to work with. I'd argue he has no material to work with, except I'm the token black guy, and that's it. I mean, like, Dave Chappelle, he legitimately looks bored in certain scenes. Like, and you, you can clearly tell the script just, like... And obviously it's in the dialogue as well, but it's just, like... There's no bite to the humor, there's no weight to it, the characters lack any sort of character at all, they're more so caricatures, and I, I hate comedies that do that. There, there are examples of comedies that actually have characters, and I'll get to one in a second, but Men in Tights, man, th this was a big, giant, colossal disappointment. I, I chuckled a few times. But man, th this was a terrible movie, you guys. I, I'm, su I'm surprised I'm even settled on a 5 out of 10 for it. I was really, really utterly disappointed by by Robin Hood Men in Tights. Carrie Ells, he's fine, but he did better in Princess Bride. If you want a better movie with him as this sort of swashbuckling character, obviously you'd watch Princess Bride over this this rubbish. I mean, th this movie is rubbish. It's It feels lazy. A lot of the humor is very dated and very reliant on the fact that you, as an audience member, have seen Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. And, you know, it's very much like the, the worst of the scary movie movies, where they're so reliant on you knowing these pop, pop culture references that it just becomes exhausting. It's like, I've, I don't care. I just want good comedy. And it seems like every, it's like every, every build up to a joke is just, null and void like uh they they have this uh, joke in here where uh you know robin hood's talking and he's like lend me your ears and they all throw their ears at robin hood and i thought that was going to lead to a joke because uh, at one point they're all sitting in unison on horseback i thought one of them was going to talk and then the rest would go huh 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 
and then it'd be revealed that, you know, they're, they're still missing the ears that they threw at Robin Hood. I thought they were going to do something clever like that, but no, nothing happens of it. They just throw their ears and that, bam, that's the end of the joke. You know, and uh, Mel Brooks finally comes in. He's directing this, of course. He comes in around an hour into this movie. And, yeah, like, God, this movie is just such a disappointment. And also Richard Lewis, uh, who's more so a standout on Curb Your Enthusiasm. He's okay here as, uh, I guess, Prince John or King John or whatever. But I couldn't help but picture like Gene Wilder, somebody like Gene Wilder in this role and how much better Gene Wilder would have been as this King John or Prince John character than, uh, than uh, Richard Lewis or whatever his name is. I mean, it just, oh, I got so like, it was just, but like midway through this movie, I found myself like more engaged with it. They, they had like some fun swashbuckling action sequences that sort of harken back to the Errol Flynn Robin Hood days. Like, I, I forget if that was like 40s or 50s or whatever, but, you know, original Robin Hood days. And, you know, that, that stuff I found was charming. So the, this film, I guess it flies by the seat of its pants. It's, it could either be a 5 or 6 out of 10 for me, in all honesty. I didn't hate this movie, but I hated the fact that it wasn't as good as I wanted it to be. So... Five or six out of ten, I, I'm caught in the middle on it, I guess. It, it was it was either way a disappointment, though. Number five, The Odd Couple. The Odd Couple. Uh, what is it? Uh, Jack Lemon, and... Uh, oh, darn it. Darn it. Losing my train of thought. I don't want to look it up. Jack Lemon. And uh, Walt, Walter Matthau. There we go. Jack Lemmon and Walter Matthau, man, the, these two are terrific in this film. I, I love this film, The Odd Couple. This is easily a 10 out of 10 for me. Uh, I could watch this film again and again and again and probably still be entertained by it. It's, it's just, it's in the title. It's The Odd Couple, you know, it's, it's like they're married and they, they literally have jokes about it, that, where they're calling each other by their, uh, their ex-wives' names at one point and they they know it but they're like oh whatever we'll just go with it and I need some damn water holy Toledo it's so freaking hot jeez forget about the coronavirus worry more about this heat guys come on this heat gets scary uh, number six gosh I want to race through this now you guys I'm gonna s ugh Go pass it. Oh. Man, oh man. Talking about movies. Jeez, Louise. What a hassle, man. What a what a tough thing to do. Just talking about movies. Jeez, Louise. Oh. I'm gonna sit on the ground now, you guys, because holy Toledo, this is uh This is brutal. Holy Toledo. I barely fit in the shot here. Look at that. Ugh. Barely fit in the shot there. Yeah, I'm just gonna stare ominously at the camera. Ominous, 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 ominously. Anonymous calls out to you. Answer the call. What do, what do I want to talk about next, you guys? I have no idea. Honestly, this is supposed to be a video about ten movies, but you know what? Screw you. It's about five now. Damn it! I lied. I lied. It's. It's five movies, because I'm too hot. It's too hot out. Drink water. Don't die on me. Bye.